actually developed much better than what we could expect at the time. Um, I, I was always convinced when I joined Brighting, it's great brand, great history, great roots, uh, great awareness. I mean, the, the brand was very well known that we could do something and bring it to the next level. But I couldn't imagine to reach the levels we've reached by now. And it's probably because I didn't realize at the time how rich the history of writing is. As you know, we have been relaunching products like the Premier, like the Top Time. Uh, we have now the Super Ocean, which is very much inspired by the um, that watch called slow motion of, of the 50s and 60s. So what I want to say is that we, with time, we became a generalist brand because we could, you know, we because everything was there. Mm -hmm. And I was not aware of this depth of the collection the Brighting brand had. Mm -hmm. And I also had, I only had the understanding of the Brighting of the last 20 years, mm -hmm. like all of us. Yeah. But when I met, you know, that gentleman called Fred Mandelbaum, who yeah. is one of the biggest collectors of chronographs in the world, in particular of Brighting, yeah. I realized the, the value, the real value of the brand. And based on that, we developed the brand and, and we became so successful. Well, fun is when you, when you win, when you are, when you score score goals right yeah. it's like in soccer i mean you <laughs> you you, you want to win or you want to win and uh and that's a fun part of it it's it's seeing that you work hard you train hard uh but then you score the goals and we have been scoring many goals so it has been a lot of fun mm -hmm. and um, we have a great team uh, we have great relationship with our uh, retail partners everybody's happy i mean writing is one of the fastest brands or has been one of the fastest brands in, in over the last years uh, we are we are now number seven number eight in the world and everybody's happy especially also that we're an independent brand you know quick decision process direct to to the to the decision makers no everything has been uh, doing good You know, life, uh, it, it, it is what it is. And today we have a more complicated, uh, you know, economic environment with high interest rates, with the war in Ukraine coming out of COVID, et cetera, et cetera. So the world is more complicated. But at the end of the day, I mean, I'm doing this in 30 years. So I've been through many, many, um, you know, crisis, SARS in Hong Kong, Lehman Brothers. I mean, we need, we need to deal with it, right? Yeah. And... Uh, uh, it's like in cycling, sometimes it's going down, you mm -hmm. take speed and it's easy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to climb the mountain and it's tougher. Okay. That was, but I was very young. Yeah. <laughs> I was very young. I was uh, probably 27 or something when I joined Tag mm -hmm. After I, I started in fast moving consumer goods and chocolate, you know, in yeah. Switzerland, you can do three things, yeah. chocolate, watches or banking. I'm not a banker. No. I did chocolate and yeah. then I went into watches. Yeah. And uh, after Kraft or yeah. Suchard at the yeah. time, I went to Tech Hoyer and then obviously RWC, yeah. Richemont and, uh, and Brattling. It's, I mean, you, if the, it is really when you feel that it's picking up, you know, you, you, as I said, you work hard, you train hard, you do stuff, and suddenly you feel, and funny enough, it was after COVID. It was really, because we launched the Chronomat during COVID, um, and we invested a lot, and we were very visible, and as soon as the market reopened, woof, it went through the roof. I mean, absolutely through the roof. And this was, um, Again, this is a feeling when you win, right? When you, when you, when you have a good performance, when you feel it's, it's doing well and that you score one goal after another. And this is, this is the moment. And there are one or two moments you wake up, you see the figures, you see the back orders and you realize, oh my God, there's something going on here.
Today, what is happening, you have less and less brand being su successful and the brands being successful, you have really a focus on the best sellers. And uh, sometimes it's a specific size, it's a specific dial, it's a specific model, which you don't have, you know, and it's very frustrating, but it's part of the game. We are trying to be flexible in manufacturing. We, 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 don't, we don't have a strategy of keep, keeping the market short to increase artificially the, the demand. We've never, we've never done that. We will never do this. We, will try, we try to fulfill every order mm -hmm. as soon as possible mm -hmm. um, to make our clients happy. Yeah. And, um, and, um, but unfortunately, you cannot do it all the time. And we also have the situations where we are short in stock, of course. No, of course. I mean, we have dramatically increased our, our sales over, over the last years. We have today two thirds of new customers. We have one third of the old, if you want, established Brightling clientele. But we have two thirds of new customers, which we gained from uh, from the market, from competition. Um, in the luxury industry overall, and I'm not talking about watches, but overall, you have a very young clientele. So you, it's young people buying luxury products including watches so it's between 20 and 30. in china uh, 40 percent of the disposable income of younger people are um, used for luxury products because they have this disposable income because they stay with their parents etc so young people buy these type of products um, luxury became more and more democratic uh, and therefore, I'm so confident, you know, you have more and more countries, um, be, you know, where you, where you can develop your business. We are talking about India, Indonesia, we are still nowhere in China, but even Europe and uh, even Scandinavia, even uh, uh, any countries, there's a huge potential of, uh, of growth everywhere. And therefore, I'm, I'm very confident for the future. Absolutely, we open two boutiques with them, um, and uh, in Stockholm. And uh, actually, I think we changed the market with it because now, from what I've heard, there are more and more brands coming into the Scandinavian. Market. Before we really opened boutiques, yes, you did. You opened uh, we were the first ones really opening yeah. boutiques in Sweden. I mean, beyond Sweden, also in Scandinavia, Norway, um, and and Denmark, but from what I see and, and hear is that many other brands will enter or are already into the market with, with boutiques, also with our great partner, Watches of Switzerland, yes. I need to give you my standard answer, right? Yeah. Um, I've been reworking basically all the products of the last six years. So these are my children and yeah. I love all my children. Okay, so number I, one. I expected that. Also. Okay, so <laughs> I love all my children. Um, uh, and, um, but, and I have obviously from every line, I have products. Yeah. Um, but uh, we have a really iconic product, which is a Navi timer, which we relaunched last year, uh, which is phen phenomenal. But I've, I, I think I've, I have the whole collection of the top times I have all the complications from the premier. Yeah. Uh, I wear, I, I love the, uh, the Rolo bracelet. Um, it's very comfortable. So I have the chrono, I have the automatic. I have everything, you know, um, yeah. I would say, I mean, our strategy works, okay? You don't change a strategy when it works. What we have to do is more of the same. You know, we have to show continuity, stability uh, with our brand equity. So doing more of the same and enriching a little bit the equity without changing the strategy. So you will see more books, you will see more museums, you will see uh, more things around the roots of the brand. We want to, to build what we call in marketing terms esteem meaning explaining the story which i didn't even knew when i joined brightling 
telling the story of what writing is in particular since the 30s and the 40s, right? So this is what we're going to do. But then you're right, we do also many things for brand equity. We've, uh, we've opened a boutique in, in Korea. We have a small, but this was a, just an opportunistic uh, uh, thing, but it works. So yes, how can you enrich brand? How can you build brand equity? Uh, and, and yes, F&B, what we call food and beverage, is a normal extension, and you see it in the fashion industry, by the way, of the boutique experience. And uh, it's, again, it's a small thing here. But um, yeah, if you have a good location in Stockholm, why not opening a restaurant? Also, something incredible. I mean, the background of it, the true story of it is that in January 2020, I was in Engadin, we were still in lockdown. So I was in the mountains, I had my, my skis, my cross-country skis, and I get this phone call from uh, Jean-Christophe Babin, who, and, I mean, he's a friend since many years, and said, listen, George, we need to do something. Now, Watch and Wonders and the fairs have been canceled, blah, blah, blah. Probably lockdown will be off in summer. Let's do something in Geneva, you know, you know to re activate the pump. I said, okay, great, let's do this. So I said yes immediately, and we called uh, Patrick Pugnot and a couple of other colleagues and friends from the industry and said, let's, let's do something. And, um, and we were, I don't know, seven, eight, nine brands. Today we're 50 brands, we have 8,000 visitors. There are, I think, 600 journalists. And the cool thing here is everything is organized by ourselves. There's no organization committee. You know, we have some people doing PR, some people doing events, some people doing the tent, some people doing this and that. So it is um, done in a very informal way. Uh, the second thing, the, I think the, 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 the spirit is nice because people meet, you know, at the, you know on the streets, in the, you know, close to the lake, in the tent at dinners, in the boutiques, in the hotels. And it's a spirit, I would say, from the beginnings of the Basel fairs. You know, yeah. many, many, very informed what a fair should be without rigid, you know, processes where people are pulled from one brand to another, from one presentation to another, where you cannot even talk to people. And the last thing I think which I realized really this year, it is an incredible, a platform for smaller brands because we welcome everybody okay we we, we say yes to everybody and um, these smaller brands have the opportunity in having a suite in a hotel etc to uh, showcase their products which they cannot in, in in a fair and they love it they love it and they treat it equally uh, with us we 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 are very happy that all these small brands are here, which I'm also discovering, and the passion they have. And it's a phenomenal platform for them, a, a, a very price effective platform for them to showcase their products. And it's probably the only organization in the world, the only organization in the world, which gives these people the opportunity to showcase their, their products. Yeah, yeah, of course, we want. Yeah, we want, we want. We want. No, 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 we want. We want uh, also bigger brands, also smaller brands. Um, you know, Geneva is very happy. We discussed with the authorities. Um, and um, now they love it. This informal, more approachable way of doing and again being inclusive to smaller brands, which is the you know, the power of, of and the imagination, the creativity of the watch industry. It's not only the big, big boys, right? And, and big boys and girls, but it's also the smallest. And you have lots of cool ideas, uh, as I said, which I also discover myself. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.